Hi, it's Julie, aka Headrush Designs. I'm here with my model, Skylar, today, and Kenra Professional. We are going to be making a platinum card on Skylar's beautiful curls. We're gonna be using the Simply Blonde Beyond Bond. It is a reformulated lightener. It's amazing because it's going to protect the hair from the inside out, which is amazing for curls. In our industry right now, texture and curl is huge. So it's fun to finally have something that's gonna keep the integrity of the hair and also give us an amazing platinum look with no hesitancy. So we're excited, let's get started. Because we are doing a complete transformation, he doesn't have previous color in his hair and he doesn't have any previous highlights. So I'm going to start by foiling about um, an inch off, half an inch off the scalp, get all of his ends, and then we'll proceed to his roots and then his sides and his roots. Because we wanna make sure that we get our ends to the level that we need them to before we hit the roots. In this situation, I am gonna start with a lower volume through the back and I'm gonna start kind of just to the point where I can grab some hair and get it in a foil. Sectioning in this situation is kind of up to you. If you wanna section it out in little sections, kind of whichever way you need to work, but we're gonna kind of probably do a brick pattern to make sure that I get all the little different lengths of hair. So I'm gonna start here in the back. I'm starting with 10 volume. Um, I prefer my lightener to be mixed two to one. It's a little bit of like a creamier consistency, not too runny, so. Um, we wanna make sure too that we're taking small enough partings. So I'm about a quarter of an inch thickness and he has very nice thick hair. So I'm even gonna be taking out little sections at a time. So I'm gonna make sure to keep it out of the foil or keep it off of the scalp so that we can make sure. And always make sure when you're working with lightening products that you're evenly saturating. If you leave anything left like that, you're going to have uneven saturation which is gonna result in an uneven lightener application. So you always wanna make sure that you're applying. If they have really thick hair, you can work backwards. Just make sure that it's worked in there really, really good. Okay, and then again, reminder that we're starting with 10 volume, low and slow, especially because I have a thick head of hair. We're gonna make sure that we um, check these foils too as we're processing. So when you know that lightener is gonna be sitting on a long time, you definitely wanna start a little lower. One other tip too, when um, doing like a foil application for an on scalp look too, make sure like even though I'm taking thinner partings, his hair is in really good condition. It's really thick. So make sure that you're working the lightener in too so that it gets fully saturated from the top to the bottom. Also choose your developer accordingly. If in the back of their hair, typically most People are half a level to a level darker in the back section of their hair. If their hair, their porosity, all of the quality of their hair is a little different, uh, choose accordingly for your developer. Know who and what you're working with. Again, he has so much hair that I know it's gonna take me a little bit more time. That's why I'm starting with 10. Um, but sometimes uh, you can use, and then even probably through the front, I'll switch back to 10, just cause that's where the hair is the finer consistency. So now, I like to check my foils halfway through. Well, not even halfway through, cause he has so much hair. But we're just seeing he's already um, lifting really well. So I am gonna switch to 20 volume, cause this still does have to sit on. But we are to the midsection, where um, the hair uh, typically is really nice and thick. We're kind of at a brickling pattern now. As you can see, I've switched from going straight to kind of going with the curvature of his head. And then now I'm gonna start going center, and then I do, di I like to do diagonal partings. Um, I feel like that I can get all the way over to the edge, and then when I need to, I'll do a center parting when it's like the widest part of his head. I like to keep my my foils nice and tidy. I don't like them to be tight. Personally, I like the airflow through the foils, but um, I do like to fold the corners up just so they're out of the way. I try not to disturb my foils any more than I have to. Again, too, just another reminder of making sure that your foils are really nice and saturated. You're taking about quarter inch partings, and then we're staying a quarter of an inch off of the scalp, because we are gonna go back in and apply that once his ends are about to a, mm, about a nine, so a pale yellow. The scalp always lifts much faster, 
So just remember that you want to focus heavily on the ends, but you also want to keep the integrity of the hair. Learning to work with the curvature of the head too is definitely going to help you. Then you're not worrying about the head bevels. If you're, you know, trying to constantly go over the round of the head, you're going to end up with little edges that have a little bit more uh, root on them. So I like to do a, a brickly pattern, a zigzag, however you want to look at it. Uh, just so that it keeps it nice and tight to the scalp and even throughout the parting. a good visual of the brickly pattern you can see we kind of went from the bottom and then we're kind of following the curvature of his head tip back a little bit for me like right here is where it curves so I want to make sure I'm really nice and tight in this corner and then you can see now I'm having to do some centers just so that I don't also have a high point through the middle that's where we want to make sure too um, that it's staying nice and tight to the scalp and again, friendly reminder, just keep your partings really nice and thin, evenly spaced out, all that kind of stuff, just so that it processes evenly. Again, I wanna show you that even though I'm taking quarter of an inch partings, his hair is super thick. So again, make sure if you have to go back and forth, make sure that you're working your lightener through. And then when you're finished, or before you're finished, before you fold up your foil, still make sure that the application is really nice and even. Okay, I'm gonna continue this pattern. I'm gonna actually spin him, because I've done about three or four foils on this side. So I'm gonna do the same on this side so that I keep the processing even. We're gonna work through the front, and as I get through the front, you can tell even like the color, the uh, consistency of his hair changes. So we might switch to a little bit of a lower lightener. Okay, so we started at the back, worked our way up through the crown, over the curvature of his head. So now I am going to swap directions because I'm getting a little too um, far forward and extending the hair back. So now I'm gonna switch to the hairline and because again, I don't wanna disturb my foils, instead of pulling forward and pulling back, I'm gonna start at the hairline. I'm gonna use a lower volume developer. I'll probably go about his temple area where you can see the thickness and consistency and actually even the color of his hair shifts. I'll go back to a higher developer. We'll probably let it process for 10 minutes and then we'll start from the back and see where we're at. A beautiful thing about this lightener, gives you a little bit of ease of mind, is that it has the bond complex built in. So again, it, remember, it's protecting the integrity of their hair from the inside out. So yes, work quickly, but know that it's got your back. And again, I chose to switch to the front so that my foils could lay down and I won't disturb them. Especially with lightener, you wanna make sure that you let the foil sit where it is so you don't get any disturbance. Did about three partings. Now we're gonna swap and rotate to the other side so that we keep the processing evenly. You can start to see how it makes a, a crisscross pattern and then they start overlapping each other through the center. So this is too, if you don't wanna fold down your foils, you can't, but the, you don't need to. They'll just start laying over top of each other and it's really nice because then they don't disturb each other. And as we're getting to this last section, I know you've been going for a long time, we've been heavy foiling, but still keep your partings consistent, keep the tension the application even. So last piece, last friendly reminder I'm gonna show you, tip for it for me a little bit. So our parting is still nice and even, nice full saturation, about a quarter of an inch off the scalp, keeping the integrity of the hair. Other fun thing about um, doing your foils this way is you know right where you ended, where you see the pattern shift, so you're not ruffling through saying, where did I start, where did I end? We're all done foiling. Nice brickly, straight up. Started um, switching directions over the curvature of his head. Switch to the front. And remember we used a lower volume on his hairline to protect the integrity of his hair. Typically our hairline is thinner, it's finer, it's actually quite a bit lighter as well. And um, it's going to be having all of this foil lay over top of it. So naturally it's going to get warmer and it's laying against the face. So it naturally has warmth. So remember that too when you're formulating, you don't over formulate, okay? And then you can kind of see the fun pattern through there. It allows the foils to lay nice and tight, keep the, uh, the heat in, keep the moisture in the lightener, and now we'll let them process. Okay, so we're checking 
the progress of our first sectioning. So remember we started with 10 volume. I just wanna see where it is. We did just end with 20 volume, so we do need to allow that to process. But we're gonna check the progress of our first sectioning. The nice thing is, is lightener, and this is a purple based lightener, it's always going to give a little bit of a different reflect. So remember, what you're seeing through the lightener isn't necessarily where they are. Don't under process your lightener, okay? Always give it the time that it needs. So we can see he's got a little bit of yellow. He's a little bit darker than the inside of a banana. So we'll probably let the front process for about 10 minutes because this is almost where we want it. Then we will start pulling off the back foils and then start applying the root through our foiling area and through his sides to get him all to where we need him to be about a level 10. So I just wanna to demonstrate too as to why one, the back that we just showed was 10 volume, believe it or not, right? So we foiled the whole head, we switched to 10 volume on the hairline where it's thinner, a finer consistency, I wanna show you. So just with 10 volume, he's a little bit darker than the back, but he's almost there, okay? So that's why on the hairline we used a 10 volume, then through here we switched to 20, so then we switch to 20. You can see that we need a little bit more processing time, but they're processing evenly. That's why we alternate between sides and alternate between developers and knowing the application and where you are in the head and what you're using and why. Always be informed, know the integrity of the hair, the texture of the hair, the thickness of the hair, the color of the hair, whether you're on scalp, off scalp, Always know what you're doing and why. And sometimes, you know, if you're uh, wondering the quality of their hair, the consistency of their hair, you can always go lower and slower. So now we've let um, him process and I'm gonna show you. So tip forward for me. This is our last foil, right? So we remember where we started and where we stopped. And he, is a little bit darker than inside of a banana. So the nice thing is, is we're still gonna allow this to process through the foil while we start pulling the back out first. So this is where we started, and this is where we're gonna follow the same application from bottom up, front in, so that we can process the same. And then we're gonna apply the lightener through the sides and get him all to a level 10. So as you can see, we're gonna pull out the foil the awesome part is, is we still see a little bit of that warmth, but we're gonna work through that as we work through the root area. But it's nice, we've kept him off the root so we're not dealing with any banding or any issues like that. And the nice thing is, is because we made sure it was so saturated through our foils, it's still wet, it's still moisturized, and it's still working. It's still doing what we need it to do, but now we're going to do our scalp application. So I'm gonna pull these foils out up to a certain point. We'll work through that and then let um, the front process. So now we need to work through these sides. So this is where his hair is really short. And with a lot of people when you do on scalp applications, yes, we have some length here. So I suggest going through and parting out what you can and see how far you can grab. But this is when you want to work very quickly because now we have the on scalp application and this is where we wanna make sure that we get processed really evenly. Again too, when it's sitting out like this, you also wanna make sure that you are keeping it very, very saturated. This is when the hair will naturally dry out on its own, so you want to work quickly, but make sure that it's saturated. When you have short hair like this too, if you wanna use a comb, make sure that it's worked through. Just make sure that since you're on scalp, you're not irritating the scalp. We don't wanna scratch the scalp. We just wanna make sure that it's getting combed through all of this hair. And we are working with 20 volume. Anytime you're doing an on scalp application, each section as you get through as it's processing, make sure you're checking with your client and making sure that their scalp is handling um, the lightener. That's one more reason too why working quickly and efficiently so you get it on. We don't want it sitting on any longer than we need it to. I'm gonna work our way over to the other side. And if their hair is fairly short and clipping it doesn't work very well, go ahead and use your hands because again, you wanna get it on in a timely manner. And I know that, at least with him, his hair is short back here, but you still want to make sure that you're taking out little sections as much as you can, again, so the application is even, 
we're making sure that it's properly saturated and kind of same as we work through the foils. If you have to, push the hair around, make sure that you get that product in there. But this is working so nice, you can already see that this side has already shifted. One reason too why we let his roots, or his ends, I apologize, and the area that was in the foils process to such a lightness is because this application goes fairly quickly. That's why we're also applying a higher developer so that as we're working, we're balancing the two tones out. That's one more reason too why I choose to use foils in this situation. Because it's nice, I can make sure that I get an accurate um, application and get as close to the roots as possible so that we're not working with too much ends and too much roots at the same time. We are making sure that our ends are saturated. So I will re-pull this lightener back through. And just as we did in the foil, we wanna make sure that it's fully saturated, okay? We don't want it to look like that. We want it to look like that. One reason why I choose to work out of the foil instead of keeping it in the foil for me, then I can work through it and see where there was any inconsistencies in my foiling. If there's any pieces that chose to process a little bit slower, then I can resaturate them and get them all to an even base. I just wanna show this. I don't know if you can see, but like, look how pretty that is. It's awesome that while you're applying, like, look how beautiful that already is. Looks so good. And remember too, as you're going through their ends that are previously lightened, this is when their hair has a little bit more elasticity. So make sure as you're going through your partings, you're not pulling on their hair, tugging on their hair too hard, you know, um, that you're again trying to keep the health and integrity of their hair. Okay, so now we're to the last piece that we just pulled out. So we're gonna work our way through the front, but first we're gonna, cause we wanna get his sides processed, which just wanna show you like how awesome that already is processing, okay? But also too, I like to make sure that I'm checking through my sides here, because I can just tell that it's already absorbing, and you just again wanna keep re-saturating. And same with as when we're applying the foils, like make sure that you have fresh lightener. But now we're gonna go through the sides and get all this nice and fully saturated. And right here, I am gonna go on to his hairline. I'm gonna demonstrate like right here, it's a thinner, finer texture. So I'm gonna try to keep it off that. But this down here is a thicker, darker color. So we are gonna include that in. But where his hair is the lightest, in texture and in color, we're gonna leave that off for just a second. Cause that will process so much faster than you think. And if you're ever worried about their hairline, the integrity of their hair, even in a non-scalp application, you'd be very surprised. You could just switch to 10 volume right there and we will assess that when we get there. Before I go through to the front, I'm just gonna kind of go back through these sections. I do wanna show you like how beautiful that already is processing and he's processing nice and even. Okay, and now that all of his sides are fully saturated, I'm gonna pull one foil out at a time. And because the hairline is the lightest and the thinnest consistency of um, hair, texture-wise, I am going to work from our last piece because it's exactly where we need the ends to be. Make sure that my ends are saturated and then I'm gonna apply it right to my root. Our last piece, because of the way that we foiled, 10 volume, uh, 20 volume through the mid, 10 in the hairline, 20 in the back. Now we're all working with the same colored ends so that now we can process the roots at the same time as well. It's not every application is perfect, right? We all know that. So I wanna show you the reason as to why I do pull out my foils and reapply like this. If you can see, there's a little area right through here that I obviously didn't saturate well enough. So it's nice this way, I can really work it in. And sometimes too, it's just the way that the hair is clumped together. So actually once I spread it out, reapply the lightener, it doesn't look as dark. So sometimes too, when things are in foils, we question ourselves a little bit. Okay, 
So Skylar has been washed, um, shampoo and conditioner, and then we've gone through with the Kenra Porosity Spray to even out any of the porosity before we apply our toner. So I wish you guys could feel this, but you can't. That's okay, you're just gonna have to trust me how beautifully evenly he lifted from root to end and how amazing his ends feel, especially one considering that his ends have been sitting on for an extended amount of time and that he's curly. But um, you can even kind of see just crunching it in there wet, like you can see his curl pattern holding in and it feels freaking amazing. So, so excited to get this toner on here and finally get you guys our end results. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give him kind of a fun look in the aspect of we are going to do one uh, formula on his roots and through his sides and then one formula through his ends. So his root formula is 10V, 10SM, and 9VM. So that will be applied through the roots and then through the sides. And then the ends is 10V, 10SM, 9VM plus clear. So the reason that we're using clear through the ends is to help dilute that formula a little bit. And what we naturally do with um, a platinum card on scalp application is when you do a little bit darker through the root, but same formula versus through the end, it creates a really nice shadow effect, giving um, your client a little bit of a um, depth without losing the tonality of what you're trying to achieve. It's a really fun effect and it actually helps with regrowth. So it's double bonus for you and for them. So let's get started. Okay, so I am gonna part out his top layer of length because this is where we're gonna apply um, our root formula, darker formula. And just to make sure you get all of that hair that you don't want, because we want to keep those ends as light as possible. Okay, so we're just gonna go in and apply this all through our sides. Same kind of concept as you're applying um, lightener. You still wanna make sure that your toners are fully saturated, especially with an on-scalp application. If you miss any spot um, and it doesn't have the same thickness of color on there, you will see it. So especially on an on-scalp application, you have to be very detailed about your toner. So I do like to go in and saturate it, get it on, and then I'll go through and let it work. I kind of like to manipulate it too once I've noticed it starting to oxidize so that I can see exactly where I've got it. And same, I like to go through, comb it through, make sure that it gets even saturation. I don't feel like you can oversaturate with toner. Use it all, get it on there really nice. Comb it through, work it through with your fingers, your hands, it doesn't matter. But if toner isn't applied properly, hair will absorb it differently and then you're gonna have shadow spots where you don't intend to. This is a really cool effect on short or long, but especially since he's long and we left the top a little bit longer, it'll just give a really nice shadow effect to his sides too. And the same thing as we said before with the hairline with the lightener, make sure that you're getting it on all those little pesky hairline hairs too, because same thing, you'll end up with a little different color band right around their hairline. So make sure that's nice and saturated as well. Okay, and now that we've got that on, we are gonna go through and start applying just the root through the top. And you get to decide how much of a root you're gonna give them. I like a good inch. I mean, I like that. And remember that our formula is only maybe a half a level to a level lighter for the ends. So you're not gonna see like a huge distinction but it's just gonna be a nice amount of depth for him. So the nice thing is, as you can see now, while as the toner is processing, like down through here, I can see that I need to keep saturating it a little bit, work it through a little bit more. So I'm one of those, I like to set a timer, but baby my toners, because sometimes too, if you walk away and you don't make sure that it's worked through in all the areas that you need, you're gonna miss a spot, but also set the timer to remind yourself they need to process and they need to do what they were meant to do. Don't take it off too early. So as you can see, we're already getting like our deposit through the side and back, which is amazing. We can see right where we're wanting to go. And depending too on what you're um, wanting look-wise, 
You can even let um, the root color and back color process for five minutes, then apply the ends. If you want a little bit more of a dramatic result, you can apply them you know, pretty close together, kind of just like a fun effect for what you and your client want. And we are gonna go right into putting his ends on. And same concept as when we were applying our lightener, just make sure that you're taking proper sectioning and you're really working it in. I really like to work my toners in, especially because the thickness, the consistency of hair, we just lightened him, so the way that hair is gonna absorb color is going to be different in each section. It's just inevitable, so making sure that you really work that toner in is gonna make sure that you get an even deposit as well. Even if we were doing the same formula roots to ends, I do prefer on a scalp bleach, um, scalp application to apply the root first. Even if it's the exact same formula, again, only because I can see how it's oxidizing and how it's transforming into what I want and then I can see where I missed. If there's any spots I need to work it in a little bit more, it allows you to see how your hair is absorbing what you've created. You can choose to apply the toner at the sink or at the chair. It doesn't matter, it's totally personal preference. For me, I like to apply the toner in this uh, format at the chair so that I have full visibility of what my product is doing. And then watch it and let it work. We're gonna let it process 20 minutes so that we get um, the full maximum deposit and get our final fun end results. Okay, so here is our finished look. I'm obsessed, I don't know about you guys. Um, Skylar, how do you feel about it? Amazing, I love the color, I think it looks beautiful. Good, I'm gonna spin to show you guys. You can see like even just how it kept his curl intact, kept it beautiful, kept it soft, kept it full. We didn't lose any volume, any texture. It looks shiny, it looks healthy, and if only you guys could feel it you would understand, but you can't. So you'll just have to wait to try it on your own. So love how it turned out. So thanks for watching. So make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you wanna see some more demonstrations of blonding techniques. And we can't wait to teach you.